Aloha and welcome to a new show here on thinktechhawaii.com called Hawaii's Volunteer Champions. I'm your host, Peter Rawson. We're going to be talking to a variety of volunteers to find out why they do what they do and who they do it for. Uh, why do they give up the two most precious resources any of us has, which are time and personal effort, for some cause or other? And what are the causes people want to work on? So uh, I have two great guests today, and I'm welcoming them now. I have Kat Salerno and uh, Emily Green. Emily is the uh, Education and Engagement Manager for Hawaii Marine Animal Rescue, which is the organization Kat uh, volunteers for. So aloha to both of you. Hi. <laughs> All right, Kat, let's just start right with you and uh, tell us what you do for uh, this organization, Hawaii Marine Animal Rescue. Sure. Uh, well, I started as a field support and outreach person. Uh, basically, we respond to uh, a variety of things, mostly Hawaiian monk seals on the beach. Uh, and we go out and educate folks right on the beach and uh, about keeping their distance uh, about the plight of the Hawaiian monk seal. Uh, as I got further in volunteering, I started on the rescue and stranding response team. Uh, mm -hmm. We go out and help all kinds of animals, birds, turtles, you name it. We, we go out and help all kinds of, all kinds of animals. Oh, that's terrific. So uh, I take it you're kind of on call. You don't really have fixed hours or are you, uh, are there certain times where you go someplace to be the volunteer? Super flexible. We create our own schedules. Uh, and so for the field support and outreach team, you basically volunteer eight hours a month. You get to pick those hours, uh, broken up into four, four hours each, uh, any day, any day of the week you want. So when you do outreach, where where do you go? Who do you outreach to? Yeah, it depends. So uh, I volunteer a whole lot in the southeastern section, so Waikiki, very busy areas. Uh, mm -hmm. So a lot of the folks I'm talking to are visitors, uh, people who aren't familiar with our wildlife at all. Okay. So is that like organizations or schools or just go up to people on the beach and say, hi, would you like to know about uh, Hawaii uh, Marine Animal Rescue? How do, who do you talk to? Yeah, so it's mostly them coming to me because I'm responding to a seal on the beach, creating sort of uh, what we call an SRA setup, basically a nice line 50 feet from uh, the seal. So they're coming over, visitors, to, to see what's happening. And I grab them when they're there and we have a nice conversation about what's happening. Okay, so it sounds like you don't spend really much time in an office or uh, inside. You're mostly out, outdoors, out on the beach. Is that, is that right? It's one of the best reasons why I picked this gig, volunteer <laughs> gigs, because I get okay. to be on the beach. All right, Emily, uh, <clears throat> tell us a little bit more uh, to give us the big picture of why uh, marine animal rescue, what it, you know, beyond obviously what you do. You, know, we, you guys have, or the problem's been in the news a lot lately with monk seals uh, being murdered, frankly, and being endangered. Uh, tell us about the organization. Yeah, so I'm the education and engagement manager for Hawaii Marine Animal Response. We go by H Mark, just easier to say, um, but we're a nonprofit. We've been around for about seven years now. And we work with Hawaii's monk seals, sea turtles, seabirds, dolphins, and whales. Uh, so any kind of protected species, typically. The majority of our work is the FSO, Field Support and Outreach Program, which is one of the programs that CAT is a volunteer with. And that is our monk seal program. We're going out onto beaches where monk seals have come up onto the shore to rest. Uh, monk seals spend about a third of their life on land. And we go out and set up what we call an SRA seal resting area, which is a space for them to have a nice little nap. And we go out, identify the animal, assess body condition, and then do outreach and talk to people, make sure they know how far to stay away from seals, why the seal's there, make sure people know that the seal is okay. Um, a lot of people are really concerned about our seals when they're on the beaches. It's not a normal thing to see other places around the world. Um, so that's a big part of our FSO program. We also do our mom and pups, which I see on the screen right now. Um, we do all of the mom and pup monitoring and outreach around the island every year during pup season, which is from March to September. 
We also have our rescue program, which does the rest of our animal work. So rescues for sea turtles, seabirds, dolphins, and whales. Most of that's gonna be entanglement stuff, as well as just general health issues. Um, we do that kind of stuff every day. That is very flexible. It just depends on when an animal needs help and what we do with that. Uh, and then our other programs are our marine debris program. So that is, we have a group of divers who go into near shore waters and clean up hooks, lines, nets, weights, primarily what we consider derelict fishing gear. Um, they'll pick up pretty much anything, but that's our main area of focus. We also have our marine operations program, which is our boat. So we use that to do pickups as well as to rescue animals if necessary. And our education program, which is mine, and that is going into classrooms and public outreach events and teaching in a more formal setting. And lastly, we have our hotline. So we, the only way we're able to hop, operate is that people call us and let us know. So we operate the NOAA Marine Wildlife Stranding Hotline for Oahu and Molokai. And that operates from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., which is how long we're in the field for every day, 365 days a year. People call us, let us know that seals are on the beach or a turtle needs help, and we go out. Mm. You must have some feeling about uh, all these news articles we've been reading about the attacks on the, on the monk seals. I, I, to, I can't imagine why, how or why anybody would do that. Uh, what, what's your feeling about that? It's awful. It's not something that I think we're supposed to be able to wrap our minds around. It's not something you ever expect to see or deal with. Um, yeah, it's been a hard thing for all of us. We spend so much time with these animals and we dedicate so much effort to them and make sure that they are healthy and safe. And yeah, so it's, it's a tragedy anytime we have a seal. Yeah, it is a tragedy. It's awful. Too. Uh, how many people does the uh, does your organization employ, actually? How many staff people do you have? Yeah, there are six of us that are paid staff. We're a pretty small team. Um, yeah, most of us are. Okay, and, and roughly yeah. how many volunteers do you have? Ooh, somewhere around 90, probably, wow. like between all of our programs. Um, the majority of our volunteers are in our FSO program, which Kat is a part of. Uh, there's about 60 volunteers in FSO. And then our second biggest is our marine debris program, which is our divers. So it seems to me that safe to say that you really couldn't carry out your mission without those volunteers. Is that is that, real, oh. is that a fair thing to say? Yes, definitely. We rely in so heavily on having volunteers who can go out to our SEALs um, and help us with rescues and diving. We have about 70 seals that utilize Oahu's habitat at any time. Mm -hmm. And so on a given day, we have anywhere between, I don't know, two and 10 monk seals hauled up on Oahu typically, oh, maybe more. Really, really. And yeah, and so having people who are able to go out and respond to those animals is crucial. We can't do it what we do without them. All right, Kat, tell me, uh... You mentioned the chance to be outdoors, which is one of the good things about volunteering yeah. for this organization. Why do you volunteer in general? I imagine you've got a real life, you know, another life. You've got maybe a job, maybe a family, whatever it is. Why do you volunteer? Yeah, you know what? I, I'm taking up space on an island with really limited resources. Uh, and I feel it's my responsibility to do something to give back. Um, and, and you know, I, I also sit in a chair all day. So being able to get outside and help endangered animals is pretty good, pretty good way to do that. In general, and, that, and specifically this organization, I mean, among all the organizations you could have chosen, and there are others that would have gotten you outside, why uh, this particular one? Yeah, so listen, threatened and endangered animals is a passion of mine. I, I want to help. Uh, and I feel like so many visitors come here without understand, having an understanding of how fragile our ecosystem is, uh, that we do have endangered animals on our beaches. Um, so I feel HMAR is just the, the place to be to respond on the ground to these animals. 
Okay. Uh, are there any, uh, you, you have, you work for another nonprofit, so you have some experience in kind of that situation, but are there other uh, experiences or skills that you bring to this volunteer work uh, that you think are helpful or make you particularly useful? Uh, I mean, yeah, I say yes. I like to say yes. And so they, they appreciate Please that. Please say yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also have the gift of gab. So I like to go out there and, and chat with folks. Uh, and especially when I'm passionate about something, uh, I like to, I want to talk about it. So if you and Emily surround a couple of, of visitors, they probably can't get a word in edgewise, can they? Because you both got the gift of gab, I think, huh? <laughs> I met they will Emily be in... bombarded with material information. <laughs> I met Emily library. in a workshop, and she was a star then, and I bet she's terrific when she's doing this or in a classroom. Yeah. So can, are there uh, other skills perhaps that you wish you had, you wish you uh, knew more about or something like that, or you're pretty, you feel pretty comfortable, pretty confident? I'm comfortable talking about the basics, uh, but there's always more to learn uh, and there's always more being discovered. That's what's kind of cool about these species, too. Um, so it's it's really interesting to learn about the animals. Uh, I'm learning currently about some of the birds uh, that we have on our island, the albatross and others, and I, I find it so interesting. Uh, so, yeah, if I'm lacking anything, it's just more knowledge about about our situation here. And is there a way for you to get is there a way for you to get that knowledge? Are there any kind of uh, there must be some training or classes or something? Uh, I probably should ask Emily this, but Kat, what yeah. what kind of training have you had to help you to do this job? Yeah, we go through uh, quite a bit of training, uh, both at on the campus and in the field, which I find very helpful. Um, and as Emily knows, I ask a whole lot of questions uh, all the time. So uh, I'm a curious person and there, the staff is awesome and available uh, to answer anything. Even if it's not related, I've asked bird questions, all kinds of questions to them and they're really responsive to us as well. All right, Emily, um, tell us a little bit more about Kat as a volunteer. She's not exactly shy and willing to talk about it, but uh, you know, how do you see what she does and how do you, uh, you know, how, how does somebody like this really help what you do? Immensely. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how I can like phrase it perfectly to like encapsulate all the things that Kat does for us. Um, how long have you been a volunteer for? Like two-ish years? Yeah. Two-ish years. Kat is someone that you can call at really any point and be like, hey, you wanna like go do something for us, please, maybe, Pat? Um, and she's always willing to go out and willing to help and she's so flexible in her time schedule and you are so calm under pressure. Pat volunteers a lot in Southeast and in Waikiki, busy beaches, there's a lot of people, there's a lot going on, it's chaotic from time to time. And you're so good under pressure. And that's part of the reason why we moved you to the rescue team. So our rescue team, you really do get put in situations that are not comfortable for a lot of people. We're dealing with deceased turtles, injured animals. And one of the things we look for is people who are calm under pressure. And Kat fits the bill for that. So Kat has always been very responsive, very flexible with her timing, open and interested. You're always asking questions <laughs> and wanting to go out and learn more, which I love. That's something that I'm really passionate about is I want people to ask questions. I want people to learn. Uh, that's why I'm in education. And so Kat has always been someone who's willing to like take the extra step and do the extra thing and, and go out and get the job done. So we're really, really grateful to all of our volunteers and everybody who does this work. But Kat is definitely one of our great, great, great volunteers. She just won volunteer of the quarter um, wow. not that right. long ago. Um, take a right. button, take a name. So yeah, she's she's a fantastic volunteer. We're really grateful. <laughs> All right, Kat. You, I've heard you're good under pressure, so let me throw a question at you that I didn't mention <laughs> before. Um, tell, tell me a story about some situation, uh, you know, where either, you know, in education or in on the rescue team, some situation you were in where being calm and collected and really and kind of knowing what to do uh, really paid off. Can you come up with a story like that? Oh, yeah. I have at least 100. Um... <laughs> 
So I, I was on a pup shift uh, on Kaimana Beach this summer where a pup was born, very busy beach, lots going on. The sun was just setting, so it was getting a little bit dark. We have quite a large area uh, sort of roped off and a uh, naked baby runs under the rope and through the SRA, through right through toward the seal, running right at the seal. Uh, so what do I, what do you do? Uh, called out to him, hey, let me tell you a story. Just trying to entice him into coming my direction, getting back under the rope. Um, hey, where's, where are your parents? Just having a nice conversation about, about it. Where are your clothes? Uh, so <laughs> I, uh, yeah, so, so I think just having a solution to just kind of winging it and trying to resolve the situation without making it worse. I didn't want to scare him. That could have pushed him toward the seals. Um, so yeah, just trying to get him back under the rope and, and it, and it worked. All right. I would assume most people, when you talk to them, uh, and you explain what, what's going on and why, why this so much of this very popular beach, for example, is roped off. Uh, most people would say, oh, okay, I, I get it. But do you encounter people who just don't get it? Of course. Of course we do. Um, you know, I have to say, though, 97% of people are interested. They care, once, especially once you explain how endangered these seals are, why we're keeping distance, uh, those kinds of things. Most people are really cool about it. Those 3% of people, all you can do is sort of give the information and walk away. And, and hope they think about it later. You have, if, if you were in a situation and somebody was really making your life difficult, do you have any kind of backup or do you call the lifeguard or uh, what do you do if, if you're really, I mean, there are some people out there who are just um, belligerent for one reason or another. Do you, do you feel okay in that situation? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I can hold my own in most situations. But I have to say, I don't feel abandoned at all. I will call Emily if the smallest thing is happening. Uh, the the Hawaii Police Department, the Honolulu Police Department has been super helpful as well. They're always checking in. Uh, the lifeguards are helpful. Uh, locals on the beach are always super helpful. So I, it feels like a community is supporting the effort. Um, but directly, uh, there have been plenty of times I've I've had to call one of our field staff up and, you know, report a situation or ask advice about what, what to do. Um, and most of the time, Emily just gets in the truck and drives to me and, and figures it out. Does the, does the conversation for me. Uh, so yeah, super supportive in that situation. But it does. Our big like rule, yeah. our big rule is if you are not paid enough to get into any kind of situation with anyone, um so like we just say our recommendation is walk away if they're being belligerent it's not it's not worth it yeah. um there's just not so much that we can do all the time every time but yeah cat's right i would say 97 percent of the people we deal with yeah, are that's good, that's good advice it's you're you're there to protect uh living things and you don't want to endanger other living things in that process and uh but it does sound like as a volunteer even though you're a volunteer you're you're virtually empowered like a, a staffer uh in other words you know sometimes volunteering is doing the stuff that is in the background so the staff can do the job or uh you know sometimes frankly volunteering is uh doing the, jo the jobs that the staff doesn't want to do but it does sound like you're really out on the front line just as if you were just as if they were paying you, which they're not, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to to act as as a, a real uh, rescue official. Yeah, I feel empowered in that way too. Uh, and, and I do, you do feel it, you know, you put on the shirt, you walk out there, you look super official. Uh, so you kind of rise to the occasion as well. Uh, you, you're, you're the one on the beach with the shirt on. People are going to come to you. All right, very cool. Emily, maybe you can help this question. Uh, you know, Kaimana Beach is a very popular beach. It's kind of one of my favorite beaches, has been for uh, as long as I've lived in Hawaii, which is probably longer than both of you have lived together. But, uh, you know, uh, why are the, why does it seem so often that the, the monk seals are 
uh, on that beach, or is it just my impression because of the news? Uh, why is that such a popular beach with the monk seals? You're not wrong. Uh, that is definitely a beach that they're on pretty frequently. I cannot answer that question for you. You'd have to ask Paibi, who is one of the seals that hangs out there. Uh, she could probably tell you. I have. It's a good area. There's a reef right there. It's pretty like, you know, like the natatoriums on one side. There's a jetty on the other. But in terms of why they like that beach so much, I could not tell you. They love it, though. And they're there all the time. And they're having cool. babies on it. Yeah. So... Where yeah, maybe they love this. Just, yeah, go ahead. We just do whatever they want. If they want to go there, we will be there. Um, but yeah, we not sure why they choose that one. Well, they were coming there to that beach before I got there, so that gives them the certain uh, privileges. But uh, you know, I suppose they like it for the same reason I like it. It's a great beach. Uh, it, it does have a very easy uh, shoreline entrance, and there's a, a reef protection, and there's uh, you know, I mean, there's a reason it's popular with human beings, and maybe that's the reason it's popular with with monk seals as well. So um, anyway, we'll we'll have to find out the answer to that question. First of all are you recruiting more volunteers always 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 we never have too many volunteers people move off island people have less time um and the field is always busy so we can always use more volunteers in any of our programs so we have our field support and outreach program which is our most popular which is what cats part of with the monk seals our marine debris program our education programming our hotline needs volunteers like all the time um, and that's you do from home you can sit on your couch or be in your bed and I don't care where you are as long as you can answer the phone and you have a computer that's all you need and that's a program that we're always looking for people to participate in as well as our FSO program so, yeah, so there yeah, is a, yeah so there is a range of opportunities it's not just people who are willing to be outdoors and and face off to visitors there's there's back of the house stuff there's as you say I, I might be able to qualify for answering the phone from my bed I'm not sure but anyway we'll see uh, and, and but what do you look for in a volunteer if somebody comes to you and says you know I really would like to help what do you what do you ask them what do you tell them uh to make sure they're the right fit uh, we already know you want people like Kat uh but generally speaking what what do you uh what do you look for in a volunteer yeah so a lot of what we look for is the desire and the passion to be out there and be in the field the biggest thing that we do is public outreach so having someone who's comfortable talking to the public and doing that kind of stuff is really important. Um, and making sure that they're able to kind of keep themselves separated from the end. We love them so, so much, um, but we have to be scientists at the end of the day. We have to kind of separate ourselves from the animals to make sure that we're doing what's best for them at all times. So finding people who are passionate about the cause and who love being on the beach in the hot sun for four hours and standing there um, and talking to people and being willing to put themselves out there is something that we're, we're really looking for all the time. And people who, you know, know the island, know the culture of the island. That's always something that's important uh, for us as well. Okay. All right, Kat, I'm going to give you another pressure question here. <laughs> uh, is there something you would uh, change about the volunteering for this organization? Or is there some other, uh, is there something you would like, you know, or the hours were, sounds like they're very, they're, they're very on call. Is there anything you would say, uh, wow, I'd like to see done differently? Uh, you know, the only thing would be continuing education. I think we need more staff, honestly, to continue that education for the volunteers. Uh, I, you know, but that takes, we're a nonprofit, that takes money. Uh, yeah. So it's, it, to me, that would be the only thing I would yeah. recommend. Yeah. I don't think Emily would complain about the idea of more, more funding and more staff. I got a feeling. So, um, and, and are you happy with the t-shirt? That's the other important question. Do you like that t-shirt? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, you don't have to do that one. Because it's me. So, Emily, how do <laughs> how does somebody who is watching this show uh, now or in the future, how do they volunteer with you? Yeah. So I know that down on the screen is our link to our website. Right. Um, at the top of our website is a button that says get involved and then it says join the team at the bottom. Um, and that is the applic application okay. to be a volunteer. There's no interview process. You, If you apply, you will get in. Um, but that is the application for becoming a volunteer. It's basically so we have your information so we can reach back out to you and figure out what program is the best fit for you. And then they will be scheduled for an orientation and a training. So we do those probably every other month. Our next one's going to be in August. And they'll go through training in our facility as well as in the field so that they're really prepared to do that. And then they'll be sent out on their own. Where is your facility, generally speaking? Kailua. We're based Kailua. in Kailua. Okay. And I should have asked before, but how is your organization funded? Is, uh, is it all donation or are there some funding? Is it government money or what? Yeah. So because we work with protected species, we're partially funded by the federal government who permits and oversees those species. We're also par partially uh, funded by the state and other like government agencies, Hawaii Tourism Authority, things like that. But we rely really heavily on corporate sponsorships as well as public donations. We, this is a really cool field. There's really cool things that happen here, but it is not inexpensive. Um, it takes a lot of money to do these, like these field yeah. rescues and these responses. And so we're always looking for donors and donations. So that's on our website too. Terrific, Emily. Uh, thank you. The uh, the all the all the seals in the ocean have are very lucky to have you working for them. Cat, same with you. Where I think we are all lucky, and they're all lucky. Thank you so much for being part of this show. Uh, and um, I hope uh, a few people think about either donating money, which is always welcome, or donating time and effort, which is uh, perhaps even more valuable. So this has been Hawaii's Volunteer Champions. Uh, I'm Peter Rossing. Thank you for watching. We're going to leave you with a, a thought about volunteering and see you in a couple of weeks. Aloha and mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.